Here we consider how to apply the Euler's differential equation to the problems we have discussed earlier. In part 2, we have derived the Euler's differential equation in the form d by dx of dou f by dou y dash minus dou f by dou y equal to 0. The Euler's equation in this form is not much useful in practical problems. So, we find the expanded form of the Euler's differential equation. Dou f by dou y dash is a function of x explicitly and also implicitly through y and y dash. Hence, we have d by dx of dou f by dou y dash equal to dou by dou x of dou f by dou y dash plus dou by dou y of dou f by dou y dash into dy by dx plus dou by dou y dash of dou f by dou y dash into dy dash by dx which is equal to f y dash x plus f y dash y dy by dx plus f y dash y dash d square y by dx square since the derivative of y dash is d square y by dx square. So, the expanded form of the Euler's equation is f y dash y dash d square y by dx square plus f y dash y dy by dx plus f y dash x minus f y equal to 0. This equation is of second order unless f y dash y dash equal to 0. So, the extremals constitute a two parameter family of curves. The stationary functions are those in which the two parameters are chosen to fit the boundary conditions. Fortunately, most of the practical problems come under the three cases of the Euler's differential equation which we now specify. Case 1. If x and y are missing from the function f, then the Euler's equation reduces to f y dash y dash d square y by dx square equal to 0. If y dash y dash not equal to 0, we have d square y by dx square equal to 0 and integrating twice we get y equal to c1x plus c2. So in this case the extremals are all straight lines. Case 2. If y is missing from the function f then Euler's equation in the original form become d by dx of dou f by dou y dash equal to 0 because dou f by dou y equal to 0. Integrating we get dou f by dou y dash equal to c1 is the first order equation for extremals. Case 3. If x is missing from the function f, then we have, we consider the term d by dx of dou f by dou y dash y dash minus f. We will show that it is equal to 0 by applying the Euler's differential equation and the fact that dou f by dou x equal to 0. So consider d by dx of dou f by dou y dash y dash minus f. Applying the product rule to the first term, we have d by dx of dou f by dou y dash into y dash is equal to y dash into d by dx of dou f by dou y dash plus dou f by dou y dash into d y dash by dx minus the second term, the derivative of the second term df by dx which is equal to y dash into 
as we have derived earlier d by dx of dou f by dou y dash is equal to f y dash x plus f y dash y dy by dx plus f y dash y dash d y dash by dx plus dou f by dou y dash can be written as f y dash and d y dash by dx is d square y by dx square minus of d f by dx again it can be written as dou f by dou x plus dou f by dou y dy by dx plus dou f by dou y dash d y dash by dx equal to f y dash into since f y dash equal to z y dash x equal to zero the first term become y dash into zero plus f y dash y dy by dx plus f y dash y dash d square y by dx square plus f y dash d square y by dx square minus dou f by dou x minus f y dy by dx minus f y dash d square y by dx square equal to y dash into d by dx of dou f by dou y dash minus dou f by dou y minus dou f by dou x this follows since the terms plus f y dash d square y by dx square and minus f y dash d square y by dx square gets cancelled and we take the term minus f y dou y dy by dx together with the first term in the bracket which is d by dx of dou f by dou y dash. Now since dou f by dou x equal to 0 and the expression in brackets is 0 by the Euler's differential equation we get d by dx of dou f by dou y dash y dash minus f equal to 0. On integration we get dou f by dou y dash y dash minus f equal to c1 where c1 is the constant of integration. Now we consider the problem of finding the shortest curve joining the points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Here we have to minimize the integral i equal to integral x1 to x2 root of 1 plus y dash square dx. So here f of x, y, y dash equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square. This comes under case 1 since the variables x and y are missing from the function f. Now we check whether f y dash y dash not equal to 0. We have f y dash y dash is the derivative dou by dou y dash of dou f by dou y dash which is equal to y dash by root of 1 plus y dash square and we get it is equal to 1 by 1 plus y dash square whole raised to 3 by 2 which is not equal to 0. So the extremals are the two parameter family of straight lines y equal to c1x plus c2 as we have stated above. Applying the boundary conditions y of x1 equal to y1 and y of x2 equal to y2, we get the value of the constants c1 equal to y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2 and c2 equal to y1 minus of y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2 into x1. Therefore, we can see that the stationary curve in this case is y minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 which is the straight line joining x1 y1 and x2 y2. So to summarize what we have obtained, if integral i 
has a stationary value then the corresponding stationary curve must be this straight line clearly i has no maximizing curve but does have a minimizing curve so the above straight line must be the shortest curve joining the two given points next we consider the solution to the brachistochron problem here we have to minimize i equal to integral x1 to x2 root of 1 plus y dash square divided by root of 2 gy dx here f of x y y dash equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square divided by square root of 2 gy since the variable x is missing from the function f by case 3 euler's equation become do f by do y dash y dash minus f equal to some constant say c1 dash we have do f by do y dash equal to 1 by square root of 2 gy into y dash by root of 1 plus y dash square so the euler's equation is 1 by root of 2 gy into y dash by root of 1 plus y dash square into y dash minus f which is given by root of 1 plus y dash square divided by root of 2 gy equal to c1 dash thus we have y dash square by square root of y into 1 plus y dash square minus square root of 1 plus y dash square by root y equal to c1 that is 1 by square root of y into 1 plus y dash square equal to c1 or y into 1 plus y dash square is taken as constant c thus y dash square is equal to c minus y by y that is dy by dx whole square equal to c minus y divided by y on integrating dy by dx equal to square root of c minus y by y using the method of separation of variables that is integral square root of y by c minus y dy equal to integral dx for this we put y equal to c sin square phi thus y by c minus y which is c sin square phi by c cos square phi equal to tan square phi and we get dy equal to 2c sin phi cos phi d phi hence equation 1 become 2c integral tan phi sin phi cos phi d phi equal to x plus constant of integration capital c1 that is 2c integral sin square phi d phi equal to x plus c1 or c into sin sin square phi 2 sin square phi equal to 1 minus cos 2 phi we get c into integral 1 minus cos 2 phi d phi equal to x plus c1 on integration we get c by 2 into 2 phi minus sin 2 phi equal to x plus c1 thus x equal to c by 2 into 2 phi minus sin 2 phi minus c1 since the curve passes through the origin x equal to 0 corresponds to y equal to 0 and hence to phi equal to 0 applying the condition x equal to 0 when phi equal to 0 
we get c1 equal to 0. Hence, x equal to c by 2 into 2 phi minus sin 2 phi. Also, we have y equal to c sin square phi equal to c by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 phi. Putting a equal to c by 2 and theta equal to 2 phi, we get x equal to a into theta minus sin theta y equal to a into 1 minus cos theta. These are the standard parametric equations of the cycloid which is generated by a point on the circumference of a circle of radius a rolling under the x-axis. So, if i has a minimum, then the corresponding stationary curve must be the above cycloid. Clearly, i has no maximizing curve but does have a minimizing curve. So, this cycloid actually minimizes the time of descent.